Being in high school is difficult, okay? But I probably didn't have to tell you that because you already know. In fact, I know this could get crazy, but let's try it. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to turn to your neighbor and vent about some of the most difficult parts of high school for you. Ready, go. Okay, you know what, that's long enough. Now, I don't know if you feel better or more frustrated after that. Some of you, you're gonna be talking for a little while, but just we'll, we'll get back to that later. And while I couldn't hear all of your conversations, or you know what, I'm on video, I couldn't hear any of them. I'm guessing a lot of them boil down to the same idea pressure, because your world has a lot of it. Maybe you feel the pressure of doing well in school, in sports, and in every other extracurricular activity that you're involved in. Maybe you feel pressure from your parents, guidance counselors, and even yourself when you consider college or maybe what comes next after high school. Maybe you feel pressure in the form of social media comparison. If you're like most of us, that pressure feeds a fear of never measuring up never being in the group of friends you want, never getting the date you want, and never having the sense of belonging that you want. So many of you are familiar with the words stress and anxiety. You use them casually when talking about what to wear, or what movie to watch, but you also feel them when you're trying to sleep at night, when you sit down to take a test that you forgot about, or maybe you remembered. When you get asked by an adult what you're gonna do with the rest of your life, when you think about what to do next Friday night, when you hear your parents arguing in the other room, it goes on and on. See, the crazy thing is we experience it in so many areas of our lives that we often don't even notice it. It becomes a natural part of our existence. And if we do notice it, we wonder, is it anxiety or just a little bit of stress? Is it normal anxiety or is it overload? Do I need to get help? or am I taking small things and blowing them out of proportion? Do I need to just get over it? See, when a car is close to running out of gas, the low fuel light comes on, usually accompanied by an annoying beeping sound. It's a warning sign that says, hey bro, get to the gas station and fill her up, all right? But what are the warning signs when it comes to anxiety? How do we know that, hey, we're in the danger zone? Well, unfortunately, it's not as simple as the fuel level in a car because you're a human being. You're dealing with a mixture of circumstances and your personality, influences, hormones, mental patterns, just to name a few. Every person is different. So it's not always easy to recognize the warning signs of anxiety, but there are some symptoms that when you identify with them, it's a red flag for sure. For example, when the pressure on your chest is so heavy that you feel like you can't breathe, that's a warning sign. When it's nighttime and you're trying to fall asleep but you can't because your mind is racing so fast, it feels like you're running on a treadmill and you just can't stop. When there are knots in your stomach and you feel like you can't focus on anything else, that's a warning sign. When you have a tough time relaxing most of the time because you just kind of always feel on edge, that's a warning sign. But what do you do then? What's normal and what's not? And more importantly, can we avoid these feelings? or is it just the way life is supposed to be? See, the thing about stress and anxiety is that there are some answers, but they can be different for everybody. That being said, some of what we say tonight might be helpful for you, and some of it may not be for you right now. Just know that our goal is to help you as much as possible because we love you and care about you. So to start, let's make sure we're all on the same page about the differences between stress and anxiety. What's the difference? Well, here's an easy way to think about it. Stress is specific. It's a reaction to an actual situation, like the pressure you feel over an upcoming test or a big game, that's specific. Stress is usually short term. And when the specific thing we're stressed about passes, the stress usually goes away. That test is over, the game is over, okay? Now, anxiety is not specific. It's more like a reaction to the world as a whole. Anxiety is something you feel all the time or about all things. It's a general feeling of unease or fear that doesn't go away, even when the stressful circumstance does. Now, contrary to what you may think, both stress and anxiety can be a good thing. Stress helps us accomplish what we need to accomplish. It pushes us to get better and work hard, and there's nothing wrong with that. Anxiety comes from the same fear part of our brain that puts us on high alert when there's danger nearby, like when we're about to get hit by a bus or fall off a cliff. Like, we need that part of our brains, y'all. But anxiety becomes a problem when it sticks around for too long and it's no longer helpful. 
when there's no danger that we need to pay attention to, but our mind and body is acting like there is, or when we're constantly creating new situations in our head to fear and be anxious about, we need to know that's not how we're designed to work. In fact, when we live with constant anxiety, our body creates a stress hormone that is pumped through our entire body that keeps us on high alert. And living like that for a long period of time eventually wears you down and wears you out. And at that point, anxiety isn't helpful for pointing out danger. It's hurting you. It's keeping you from functioning in normal life. So the question is, well, what in the world do we do about it? If you feel anxious almost all the time, like what are your options? Well, you can talk to a friend, go for a run, take a nap, lay off energy jinx, practice breathing exercises, meet with a counselor, get some therapy, and so on and so on and so on. Like we already mentioned, coping will look different for everyone. But for the next few minutes, we're gonna look at one thing everyone in this room can do when you feel stressed or anxious, no matter how severe or simple your feelings may be. See, anxiety isn't a new problem, it's a human problem. So even though it feels intensely personal and it makes you feel like no one else gets what you're experiencing, you can rest assured that you aren't the first and you won't be the last and you aren't alone. And that's why I love the book of Psalms. There are several different types of literature in the Bible. The book of Psalms is like a book of poetry, but in some places it's more than poetry. It's like a journal written by real people who gave a specific insight into what they were feeling. And Psalm 56 is like that. It's a poem written by David, who's probably the most famous king of Israel. And we're told that this psalm was written when David was captured in Gath by the Philistines. In hindsight, we know that David lived through this experience, but at the time, David didn't know that. So who knows how much stress and anxiety he was feeling. In the middle of that, he writes this, "'Be merciful to me, my God, "'for my enemies are in hot pursuit. "'All day long they press their attack. "'My adversaries pursue me all day long.'" See, David's enemies are out to kill him. He would be crazy not to be afraid. But notice what he does here. He names the thing that is stressing him out. And one of the trickiest things about anxiety is that it makes you feel powerless. It puts a general fear in your heart. And that's a hard thing to beat. Like how do you get over anxiety that doesn't tell you to be afraid of anything specific? Just the world in general. And that's why David starts by getting specific. And so for you and I, when we're feeling stressed, when we're feeling overwhelmed, when we're feeling anxious, we need to name it. We need to name it. But David doesn't end there. He says this, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust and I'm not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? See, check out what David does here. He moves the focus from what's making him afraid to the God he trusts. His circumstances don't change, but his focus does. His situation, it doesn't move around, but his perspective does. And that's important because sometimes the thing that causes us to feel overwhelmed is something we can't control. School is a reality. Parents arguing sometimes is a reality. Friends turning on us sometimes is a reality. And those things don't always go away like a test does once you've taken it. When life doesn't change, the one thing we can change is what we do with it and how we respond to the stress and anxiety that life brings. And we can bring it to God. See, we can acknowledge what we are feeling, we can name it, we can name why it bothers us, and we can shift our focus to something else that is a reality, and that's God's role in it. Think of it this way. When we're stressed or anxious, it can be helpful to name what, why, and who. And here's what I mean. Imagine your parents or step-parents are fighting. For some of you, you don't have to imagine long at all, right? And I don't care how old you are, when the adults in your life are fighting, it's stressful. Now imagine that, that during that kind of stress, you pray, God, my parents argue all the time. That's acknowledging what is causing the stress. And then, I'm afraid they're gonna split up. Or I hate walking on eggshells at home. Or the mood in the house is always tense. They are so caught up in their drama, they act like they don't care about my life. See, and that's why it's causing stress. And finally, God, I know that even if my home life feels out of control, you are in control. Even if my parents seem to not care, you do. Even if things change at home, you never change. See, that's who God is. So one more time, you name the what, 
What is it that's bothering you or causing anxiety? You name the why, why you feel like it's causing you that, and then shift your focus and name who God is. See, in anxious situations, this can help. Will it fix everything? Probably not. But it can help you see clearly. The idea is to form a habit of focusing on truth and gaining a perspective larger than your current one. It will help you train your mind to get out of the rut of worry, stress, and anxiety. See, think of it this way. There are tools to take on anxiety. David knew what we know, that life can be overwhelming. We will face things we don't feel prepared to face. We'll get stuck in negative thoughts, paralyzed by anxiety, stressed about things that we can't control, and fearful over what we can do about it. And over time, he figured out that it did him no good to stay stuck there. So he modeled a way through with tools that can help us today. So when it comes to stress and anxiety, there's no one size fits all cure. There are lots of good and acceptable tactics to help us cope and that's okay. But what's not okay is living with anxiety that holds you back from what you really want your day to day life to look like, all while you keep it to yourself. And that's why we want to begin the conversation today. If your stress or anxiety has begun to take over, we want you to know that this church is one of the safest places to talk about it. And if you have a conversation with your small group leader today, here's what won't happen. They won't say, hey, just have more faith. They won't say, wow, nobody else feels like that. They won't say, oh, look, you have nothing to be stressed about. No, in fact, if I had to predict how that conversation would go, I'm guessing that they won't be surprised at all. They'll encourage you and they'll help you figure out the next step. So as you head out today, no matter where you are and what you're feeling, if you're feeling stuck in the anxiety or stuck in the stress or not in the middle of it right now, be aware that seasons like this are likely to come. You need to know that you aren't and you won't be helpless at those times. There are tools to take on anxiety. There are people to walk with you. There are ways forward. And there is a God who is absolutely crazy about you and will be with you through it all.